Ever imagined a world without plastic? One morning, your alarm clock, phone, and toothbrush gone. Your fridge stops working, milk spills, and daily life spirals into chaos. While plastic is the backbone of modern civilization, its environmental toll is undeniable. Oceans fill with waste, landfills overflow, and microplastics invade our food. Would losing plastic be a dream or a disaster? Let's explore if we can keep its benefits while solving its dark side. Plastic, the unsung hero of modern civilization. Let's face it, plastic is everywhere. From the moment you wake up to the time you go to bed, you're surrounded by it. Your phone case, your laptop, your credit cards, your clothes, yes, that polyester hoodie counts, and even your food packaging, it's all plastic. And it's not just about convenience. Plastic is the backbone of industries that keep society running. Think about construction materials, transportation, and medical supplies. Without plastic, power lines would be exposed and dangerous, airplanes would lack crucial components, and hospitals would struggle to function. No syringes, no IV tubes, no sterile packaging sounds like a recipe for disaster. But here's the kicker. While we rely on plastic for almost everything, we've done a terrible job managing its waste. We create more than 400 million metric tons of plastic every year, and a significant portion of it is single-use, meaning it's discarded after just one use. Even worse, the demand for plastic is growing at an exponential rate, making the waste problem even more overwhelming. Despite growing awareness, plastic pollution is still one of the biggest environmental crises of our time, choking our planet with every passing year. If we don't take drastic action, the amount of plastic waste in the ocean could triple by 2040, turning our waterways into toxic dumping grounds. The question is, how did we get here, and is there a way out? The ugly side of plastic. Where does it all go? Let's do a quick reality check. Out of all the plastic we produce, only 10% actually gets recycled. The rest, well, most of it ends up in landfills, incinerators, or, worst of all, the ocean. It's estimated that between 1 to 8 million tons of plastic enter our oceans every year. That's the equivalent of dumping an entire garbage truck full of plastic into the ocean every minute. Marine life suffers, ecosystems get destroyed, and microplastics sneak their way into our food chain. Yup, that means you're probably eating plastic right now. Scientists have found microplastics in seafood, drinking water, and even table salt, meaning we could be unknowingly consuming thousands of tiny plastic particles every year. Studies suggest that the average person ingests about a credit card's worth of plastic every week. Bon appetit! And before you say, but I recycle, hold on a second. Recycling isn't as straightforward as you might think. Different types of plastics require different recycling processes, and most facilities can't handle the variety of plastic waste we generate. Even when you toss a plastic bottle into the recycling bin, there's no guarantee it will actually be recycled. If the plastic is contaminated with food residue or mixed with non-recyclable materials, it often ends up in landfills anyway. The reality is, our current recycling system is not built to handle the sheer volume of plastic waste we produce, and unless we rethink our approach, the problem will only get worse. Why recycling isn't the perfect solution, yet. You see, not all plastics are created equal. They're categorized by resin identification codes, which are those little numbers inside the recycling symbols. Type 1, PEAT, found in water bottles and soda bottles relatively easy to recycle. Type 6, polystyrene aca styrofoam, found in takeout containers and disposable cups, basically a nightmare to recycle. Type 7, miscellaneous plastics, the wild west of plastic, almost impossible to recycle efficiently. The lower the number, the easier it is to recycle. But here's the catch, only types one and two plastics are widely recycled. The rest, straight to landfills, incinerators, or worse, the ocean. And then there's contamination. That blob of ketchup you were too lazy to rinse out of the bottle. Yeah, it can ruin an entire batch of recyclable plastic. Even the wrong mix of plastic types can render a whole recycling load useless. Ever wondered why some plastic containers have that thin, shiny lining inside? That's because they're layered with different materials, making them nearly impossible to recycle. Then there's the issue of downcycling. 
Even if your plastic gets recycled, it often can't be turned into the same high-quality product. Instead, it gets turned into lower-grade plastic, like carpet fibers or synthetic clothing, which eventually still ends up as waste. And don't even get us started on the carbon footprint traditional recycling requires high temperatures and massive energy consumption, adding to environmental concerns. Chemical recycling, on the other hand, breaks plastic down into its basic molecular building blocks, offering a more efficient solution. However, the technology is still in the early stages of large-scale implementation and hasn't been adopted widely due to cost and infrastructure challenges. Until we perfect this process, we're stuck in a cycle where plastic production continues to skyrocket, but waste management can't keep up. Which brings us to the big question. If plastic is both a lifesaver and an environmental disaster, what happens if we just get rid of it? The no plastic apocalypse. Be careful what you wish for. At first, it sounds like a great idea. Imagine waking up to a world free of plastic pollution. No more plastic waste in the oceans, no more overflowing landfills, no more microplastics in our food. Sounds amazing, right? Not so fast. If all plastic disappeared overnight, we wouldn't just be inconvenienced, we'd be doomed. Picture this. Your morning routine is already a disaster. No toothbrush, no toothpaste, no shampoo bottles, no deodorant. Guess it's time to embrace the caveman lifestyle ever brushed your teeth with charcoal and twigs. Your phone, laptop, and TV, gone. Time to send messages by carrier pigeon. Your car and public transportation, not happening. Most vehicles rely on plastic components for wiring, dashboards, and fuel systems. Your fridge and kitchen appliances, say goodbye to them. Hope you enjoy room temperature yogurt and spoiled leftovers. The power grid fails without plastic insulation. Electrical wires become exposed, leading to widespread blackouts. Say hello to living by candlelight again. Hospitals descend into chaos. No syringes, no intravenous bags, no ventilators, no sterilized surgical tools. Imagine a doctor performing surgery with metal tools wrapped in old cloth instead of sterile plastic packaging. Grocery stores, a nightmare. Almost all food packaging relies on plastic, so perishable goods like dairy, meat, and frozen foods would become nearly impossible to store and transport efficiently. And let's not forget about airplanes. Without plastic, critical components would vanish mid-flight. Ever seen a plane plummet out of the sky because its parts suddenly disappeared? Yeah, not a great look. Even our clothes would change. Say goodbye to polyester, spandex, and nylon no more stretchy leggings, waterproof jackets, or synthetic sneakers. Hope you're ready for an itchy wool and hemp wardrobe. So while plastic pollution is undeniably a problem, eliminating plastic altogether isn't exactly a genius solution. The real challenge, figuring out how to use plastic responsibly. If we can develop smarter ways to reuse, recycle, and manage plastic waste, we might just have a shot at keeping the conveniences of modern life without drowning the planet in garbage. Can we have our cake and eat it too? The good news? There's a real solution, and it's already in motion. Enter Aduro Clean Technologies, a game-changing company based in Ontario, Canada. They're developing an innovative process called hydrochemolytic technology, which could revolutionize how we deal with plastic waste. Plastic waste is shredded and mixed with water, a catalyst, and a hydrogen source. This mixture goes into a reactor, where heat and chemical reactions break the plastic down at a molecular level. The result? high-purity liquid oils that can be turned into brand new plastics or even fuel. Unlike traditional recycling, which struggles with contamination and limited efficiency, HCT makes plastic recycling much more effective. It uses lower temperatures, which means less energy consumption, and it helps reduce reliance on fossil fuels. In other words, instead of treating plastic as disposable waste, Aduro is pushing for a circular economy where plastic isn't just discarded but continuously reused. But wait, if this technology is so revolutionary, why isn't it everywhere yet? Simple, scaling up takes time. After 12 years of research and development, Aduro is now moving towards commercial operations. They have eight patents and are actively working on scaling their technology. It's successful. This could completely change the way we think about plastic waste.
If you enjoyed this deep dive into the plastic paradox, don't forget to smash that like button and hit subscribe because trust me, you don't want to miss what's coming next. Drop a comment below and tell us, could you survive a plastic-free world? See you in the next one.